so shoulder arthroscopy has been with us for since at least about more than 3 decades now so you all know about anatomy you know about what are the superficial muscles the most important superficial muscle is actually your deltoid which is the most important muscle responsible for shoulder movements the deeper muscles uh, consist of the calf the trapezius the scapular group of muscles the vitor rhomboidus aceritus very important group of muscles and your cuff you know uh, so when you go into shoulder arthroscopy or any shoulder surgery you should know what is what are the dynamic structures around it what are the uh, static structures you should know about the, all the ligaments the thickenings of which are nothing but the thickenings of the capsule the you know humeral ligaments uh, the intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon you should know which is what is the footprint of the cuff with the biggest cuff muscle is actually your subscapularis uh, the footprint is about 40 mm to 20 mm and then is your infraspinatus and supraspinatus is actually uh, one of the smaller or the smallest muscle uh, of the rotator cuff uh, and these group of muscles where they attach uh, supra attach supra infra and teres minor attach on the Greater tuberosity and subscapularis on the lesser tuberosity. The biggest footprint is on the lesser tuberosity of the subscapularis. But some part of supra does attach, few fibers come and over and attach you know, to the lesser tuberosity also. So, just few diagrams showing us the anatomy. This is the posterior looking at the supra, infraspinatus, and the teres. This is the supraspinatus uh, looking from the top. And you should know what is the concept of rotator cable. So rotator cable is nothing but thickening of the uh, cap, thickening of the rotator cuff. There are five layers of the cuff, so there is thickening in the layer one and four. Basically, that is that constitutes a rotator cable. Uh, and there are two attachments of the rotator cable. The first uh, anterior attachment of the rotator cable is at the uh, junction of subscapularis and supraspinatus, and the posterior attachment is at the junction of uh, infra uh, posterior border of infraspinatus, or you can say infraspinatus and teres minor. Uh, why are these uh, rotator cable attachments important? These are important because uh, if the rotator uh, the tear of the rotator cuff ex does not extend into the rotator cable or attachments of the rotator cable it would not lead to pseudo paralysis so some patients even with rotator cuff tears don't have pseudo paralysis and they can take their arm up only if the rotator cable attachments one or both are involved only then it leads to pseudo paralysis so that is why it's important and when we do a cuff repair if you're not able to do an anatomical or a full cuff repair we want to restore at least the attachments of the cable that means we want to uh, at least repair the anterior most part of supraspinatus and the posterior most part of the infraspinatus we at least want to repair this area and this area if you're not able to so if, because if you can rotate restore this these cables attachments of these cables most probably the patient would be able to lift his arm overhead so that is the importance of rotator cable the area of uh, rotator cable distal the area of rotator cuff distal to the rotator cable is called rotator crescent so this is rotator crescent you go back this is the rotator cable this is the rotator crescent this is the rotator cable this is the crescent so these are what uh, just a super uh, some overview of the anatomy <clears throat> so when do you need to do a uh, shoulder arthroscopy so indications of shoulder arthroscopy so uh, you can have diagnostic indications you can have therapeutic diagnostic arthroscopy with the intent of mri ct and all the other inv imaging investigations have become very less so it's mainly therapeutic so therapeutic becomes for uh, treatment of uh, instability treatment of slap tears labral injuries for treatment of uh, rotator cuff tears uh, treatment of uh, adhesive capsulitis so various shoulder pathologies treatment can be done by shoulder arthroscopy main two main indication would be treatment of labral injuries labral pathologies and treatment of cuff pathologies these are two broad indications of uh, shoulder arthroscopy so how do you position what is the position there are two main positions which are used in uh, shoulder arthroscopy uh, the more uh, you can say it depends on surgeon's preference, his training 
and the procedure he is doing. So the two positions can be lateral decubitus and the second position is beach chair position. So lateral decub uh, decubitus position is a very commonly used position. So it's not direct, uh, full lateral the patient is actually uh, floppy lateral with the patient uh, tilted 20 to 30 degrees posteriorly. Why do you want to tilt the patient 20 to 30 degrees posteriorly? Because your scapula is facing along is along the chest wall and is facing anteriorly about 20 to 30 degrees. So that makes the glenoid face anteriorly 20 to 30 degrees. So you want to make the glenoid horizontal. You tilt the patient 30 degrees posteriorly. So to make the glenoid parallel to the ground, you tilt the patient posteriorly. Uh, usually use about 3 kgs of traction. The arm position is some amount of forward flexion, 20 to 30 degrees of forward flexion and 45 to 30, uh, 70 degree of abduction. So this is the kind of position you employ. Its arm is usually some amount of forward flexion and some amount of abduction. If you are doing an intra-articular procedure like a bank cards, you need more amount of abduction. So you increase the amount of abduction when you are doing an intra-articular procedure. When you are talking about your extra articular or subacromial procedure like a rotator cuff repair, you want to decrease the amount of abduction and maybe increase the uh, straight traction or increase the amount of traction. But normally <clears throat> you don't need more than 3 to 4 kgs of traction for a normal 70 kg individual, uh, 70 80 kg individual which you encounter in most of your day to day practice. So about 3 to 4, 3 kgs of traction is uh, adequate uh, more amount of abduction to take the uh, abduction pil uh, pillar or post higher when you're doing intra-articular work like bank cards, liberal procedure. When you're doing a subacromial work, bring the decrease the amount of abduction. So how you decide the portal? So two mo most common portals you should know. Uh, you sh there is a uh, posterior portal. Then you have the anterior portals, enter, entro superior, entro inferior. Then you have lateral portals. Most common portals which are used for your diagnostic arthroscopy and your bank cards work would be entro, anterior, post, uh, posterior portal, which is the initial viewing portal, and the two anterior portals. For your subacromial work, you need to make some lateral portals: the posterolateral, anterolateral, and the direct lateral. So how do you uh, start with your arthroscopy? First portal you make is the posterior portal. How do you, what is the position? Look for the posterior soft spot, which is the soft spot. It is the spot between your infra and your teres, infraspinatus and teres. So normally it's about two centimeters inferior and one to two centimeters medial to the posterolateral edge of a chromium. So before, before starting with your arthroscopy, always, always mark the anatomical landmarks the bony landmark. So first, first landmark you mark is the posterolateral border of the chromium. So uh, I'll go back. Uh, so this is the first landmark you mark. Feel the normally posterolateral edge of a chromium is easily felt. Feel, may feel this edge mark this position like this. Then make a second mark on the anterolateral edge of a chromium. Join the two edges. This is the lateral border of a chromium. So mark the this posterolateral edge of a chromium, sorry, this is not working very fine. Anterolateral edge of a chromium and join these two from the lateral edge of a chromium. Feel the coracoid, mark your coracoid there. Feel the anterior border of your clavicle, posterior border of the clavicle. If you put a thumb here well, next to the posterior border of the clavicle, you will you feel this junction. This is the anterior border of the spine. You can put your thumb here and feel the junction between the anterior border of the spine and posterior border of the clavicle. Mark this posterior border of the spine also and you will have this uh, uh, anatomical uh, landmarks which have been drawn. You can feel the AC joint and mark the AC joint also. Now your postro, the posterior soft spot or posterior uh, portal would go two centimeters from the posterior edge uh, posterolateral edge of crewman two centimeters inferior and two centimeters medial here you can feel the soft spot soft area between the infra and the supraspinatus you put a spinal needle and aim towards the coracoid so that is how you 
put a spinal needle into the posterior uh, area where the posterior portal is. You can push in some fluid, uh, inflate the joint with four or five ml of fluid, uh, remove the trocar, uh, remove your uh, the the syringe from the spinal needle. If there is back pressure coming from the spinal needle with the spinal needle in the joint, uh, that means that the spinal needle is in the joint. If there is no back pressure. If you have after you have insufflated the joint with 5 mm saline that means you are not in the joint you need to reposition so that is just a trick how to find the joint then you just take a stab knife give a stab incision only in the skin uh, take a straight artery go through the soft tissue feel the capsule feel the glenoid medially feel the humeral head clearly and feel the joint line between the chromium uh, sorry between the humeral head and the glenoid and push your uh, first you are uh, you can make a rent through the through a straight artery or you can use a trocar to go into the joint and uh, you feel the capsular giving way so the posterior portal is posterior border of uh, posterolateral border of acromion about two centimeters inferior and two centimeters medial the posterolateral acromion then you want to make a uh, antero superior portal so antero superior portal how do you make so before making your antero anterior portals you want to make jo make a line joining the uh, coracoid to the antero lateral edge of acromion antero superior acromion would be just lateral to the midpoint of this line and the antero inferior portal would be just lateral to the coracoid so remember the safe area for a shoulder surgeon is lateral to the line joining the acromion to the coracoid. This is a safe area. There are no important neurovascular structures lateral to this line. Medial to the line, you will have your brachial plexus and other uh, vascular structures also. So as a uh, initial part of in your arthroscopic career, it is advisable to be lateral to this line for all, all your portals. For antero superior portal, which we said that uh, it's just lateral to the mid uh, midpoint of the coracoacromial line. Uh, 